firm believer that God gave us the gospel of Christ. Why? Because he put it in the Bible. We have to find it, and we have found it. But there are other teachings in the Bible. That's not for the Gentiles. So that's why we want to show you that. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. From the book of Ephesians chapter number 3. I do not want to be in religion and tradition. If I am, tell me. I'll leave it. Amen. All right. From the book of Ephesians chapter number 3. When the screen gets there, I'm on my way too. Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to start reading with verse 1. Paul said, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, watch this, for you Gentiles. All right. If you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me for you. That is so simple. God gave the apostle Paul the dispensation of the grace of God for us Gentiles. Now, now we know in Christ you're not Gentiles no more. All right. Watch what he says in verse number three. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, which we're going to talk about probably the next time. As I wrote a four in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. All right? Which in other ages, that word ages there is dispensations. In other dispensations was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What did he show you, Paul? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Now, if you're not preaching the gospel of Christ, how are you going to become a fellow heir? No other gospel can give you that power to become a fellow heir but the gospel of Christ. So if you're in a ministry, if you're in a ministry that's not preaching to you the gospel of Christ, how are you going to become a fellow heir? Okay? That's what you got to ask yourself. And verse number six again. Number two, of the same body. Now I'm going to show you verses that tells you that in the word of God. That if, you, if Paul preached the gospel of Christ, that's what he wanted people to become. That's why we name our message the purpose of the gospel of Christ. Is to make you, number one, fellow heirs. Now he's talking about heirs with the saints. Or heirs with the children of Israel. Okay? Now, number two, of the same body. So you ought to have those things in your note. Number one, fellow heirs. Number two, same body. And number three, partakers of the Holy Spirit in Christ. And he told you how it's going to happen. By the gospel. So you decide what you want to do. You decide where you want to go to church. Because you, if you want to say, Pastor, am I a fellow heir? The first thing I'm going to ask you is, what gospel are you listening to? Pastor, am I in the body of Christ? What gospel are you listen to? Pastor, am I a partaker of the promise of the Holy Spirit in Christ? What gospel are you listening to? Everything going to come back because if you are not listening to the gospel of Christ or being taught the gospel of Christ, you can't get this. Go, you in Ephesians, back back to chapter 1. We're going to show you the inheritance. Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to start reading. With verse 1. Now, most churches read Ephesians chapter 1 as it is to the Gentiles. Chapter 1 up to verse number 12 is to the Jews believer. Chapter 13 start out with the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1 through verse 12 is what I'm reading. It's to the Jews. Verse 13 on is to the Gentiles in that same chapter. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something. Uh, let's, let's, because some of the Bible would just come out and tell you, but I'm going to do it this way. King James Version. And verse number one, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. Now when the Bible says to the saints, he's not talking to the Gentiles. He talked to two different people. One he talked to is the saints, and one he talks to is the Gentiles. 
I'm done. I messed it up. All right. Now, I didn't want to speak directly into it because it was a little loud. All right, but I don't want to lose my volume. I'm okay. Verse 1, the saints are the Jews at that time. All right, the Gentiles is everybody that was not circumcised or was a Jew. All right, here we go. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints, which are in Ephesus, and watch that, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. All right, watch what he says. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and Father. I know we love to quote that verse, but we are there because we're an heir. If you're not, if you're not preaching the gospel of Christ, you, are not, you can't claim Ephesians 1, 3 because you are not an heir. See, all these things is what they had inherited, which was the Jews, and we got in that same covenant through grace. Watch this in verse 3. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So, because we're in Christ. If the gospel of Christ is not being preached to you, guess what? You're not in Christ. You got to, to get in Christ, Ephesians, we're going to show you that when I get to verse 13 and 14. You got to believe the gospel of Christ to get in Christ. You can't believe the gospel of the kingdom and get in Christ. You can't believe the gospel of peace, which is Romans 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. That's the gospel of peace. Just read it. That don't put you in Christ. God has already done the work by putting every man in Christ and Christ in you. But you got to hear the gospel to get it. That's, that's my point. I'm okay. I just got to wash my hand. I just. All right, here we go. I hold the Bible. I can't beat the mic up. All right, here we go. In verse number four, watch what it says. According as he has chosen us in him. Watch this. This was not us. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having, this is not us. See, if you go back and get the tape on uh, the elect, you understand that that's who he's talking to there. Having predestinated us. You were not predestinated. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. Watch what he said in verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption, watch this, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded toward us, which you read, he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. Now he's talking to Israel. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. That in the dispensation, this is when it was supposed to happen for them, and it did. In the dispensation of the fullness of time. Now, that's the dispensation of grace. He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also, you're still talking to Jews, we have, an, we have obtained. Now, they had obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. That we, still talking to Jews, he'll switch over to Gentiles in the next verse. If you read another translation, it will tell you that we Jews should be to the praise and glory who first trusted in Christ. They first trusted in Christ because they are called the first fruit. They are the one that first trusted in Christ. And then in verse 13, in whom you also, talking to Gentiles now, trusted, you Gentiles also trusted, after you heard the word of truth. See, that's when we trusted. When you heard the word of truth. Not, not other doctrines. The word of truth. And I'm going to show you in the word that the gospel of Christ is the only word of truth. 
when you read anything else, it's called the word of God. The word of God was spoken by God to the prophets to give to Israel. That was called the word of God. I'm not talking about the word of God. I'm talking about the word of truth. The word of truth means the gospel of Christ has been revealed. All right. Verse number 13. In whom you also trusted Gentiles, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. After you believe what? The gospel of Christ. Well, what happened if you go into the church, you're not hearing the gospel of Christ? See, people think like, well, what I'm here, I'm okay. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's your problem. To believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God is not the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is you believe Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. I'm going to show you in the Word, most church folk believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God for their salvation. That's what John taught the church of God. That if you believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, you have life. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. See, that's what you, you, if you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God to be saved, then you are not saved yet. Verse 14. Verse 13 again. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest first fruit of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Watch what he said in verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love unto all the saints. See, he's talking now to the Jew, Gentile. When he heard that they had faith and when they heard they loved the saints, now he said, I cease not to pray for you and give thanks for you, making mention also of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, Gentiles, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You Gentiles, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what's the riches of the glory of his inheritance, that you may know, that you may know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Watch this, in the saints. It's what they got already. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power when he raised, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now I want, I want to go to Colossians chapter 1 because I'm looking at the word inheritance. Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to start reading with verse number 12. Colossians chapter 1. Giving thanks, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, watch this, which has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. See, now Colossians is saying God has not qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light because we was not partaker before. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and now he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So I'm showing you some words so that you can understand because the first word I gave you was fellow heirs. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. Fellow heirs, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We want to go down and look at verse number 18. And we're going to read that down to 22. See, I'm a fellow heir. Right. The purpose of the gospel of Christ, the first thing, is to make you a fellow heir. See, they are called heirs, you are called fellow heirs. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18, read it. For through him we both now have access 
Both who? Jews and Gentiles. We both got access by one spirit unto the Father. Before you received the Holy Spirit, you did not have access. Verse 19, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens now. We are fellow citizens. Everything we are fellows, fellow heirs, fellow citizens with the saints. And now we are of the household of God. And now we are built up on the foundation of the apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building now, fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also now are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. But before you got the Spirit, it couldn't happen. And you couldn't get the Spirit until the gospel of Christ is preached. I want to make sure you get that until the gospel of Christ is preached and you hear and believe the gospel of Christ. That was Ephesians chapter 1 I read in verse 13 and 14. After you believe, you trust it. After you heard the gospel of Christ, the, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When that happened, that's when you receive the Holy Spirit. All right? But you can't not hear the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, look at, look at Mark 1 and 1. See, you have all these gospels out here, and people just think because they hear the gospel, they're okay. Yeah, but what gospel did you hear? The gospel uh, uh, 1 and 1. Mark 1 and 1. The gospel, Mark 1 and 1. Verse 1, read it. In the beginning, are you there? Mark 1 and 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's the same thing that, look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at verse 13. The gospel of Matthew chapter 16. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is really who Jesus Christ is. You are not saved because you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You are not saved because you believe Jesus Christ is Lord, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Now, the first thing I told you you had to do was what? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. You got to hear the God. You had got to hear the gospel. Now, let's go to Matthew 16, 13 is what I told you, right? I'm okay. I'm just bringing it up a little bit. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John Gospel is Jesus Christ, who Jesus Christ is. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13 is where we are. Matthew 16, 13. See, when I read you Mark 1 and 1, it said Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Otherwise, it's telling you who Jesus Christ is. Okay, here we go. We'll read in Matthew 16, 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, can you all read? It really encouraged me when y'all read. Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? See, that's what the gospel is about. And they said, some say you are John the Baptist, some say Elias, others said Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He said, but whom say ye that I am? What questions keep being asked? Who am I? Do you know who I am? That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right. And Simon answered and said, You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. If anybody knew who he was, the Holy Ghost had to show them. That's the whole point. If they did not have the Holy Spirit, they would not know who he was. See, that's how they were saved. All right. Look at verse number uh, 16 again, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Look at verse 17. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah. Flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. See, the, the, he knew, if they knew who he was, they had the Holy Spirit. The 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That's not your gospel. Your gospel... Is you don't have to believe he's the Christ, the Son of God, to prove you have the Holy Spirit. You have to hear the gospel of Christ and believe the gospel of Christ, which is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Three things. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and let's read verse number 3. 
When you get this, say amen. All right, let's read it. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking of the Spirit of God called it Jesus Christ a curse, that no man say, no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but how? They don't know he's Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So when you read Romans 10, 9, and 10, that's what it says. Let's go there. See, it's not telling you about your salvation. It's just telling you, telling the Jew, if they believe Jesus Christ is Lord, they shall be saved. Shall be saved during the time of wrath. If you shall be saved, it means you're not. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Read, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. See, if you confess Jesus Christ is Lord, the same thing they did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That does not mean you're saved. That is called the doctrine of Christ, not the gospel of Christ. Go to 2 John 7. So you have the doctrine of Christ, which is confessing who he is. It's not the gospel of Christ, what he did to save your soul. That's the gospel. 3 John, you got 1st, 2nd, 3rd John after Hebrews. John wrote 1st, the Gospel of John, he, he wrote 1st John, 2nd John, we're going to 2nd John 7 is what we're going to, 1st John 7, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 2nd John 7 is where we go. 2nd John, verse 7 through verse 11. This is called the doctrine of Christ. What's what the doctrine is. I just read it. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. See, that's not the gospel of Christ. That's the doctrine. All right. 2 John 7, read. For many deceivers are in into the world who confess. That's Romans 10, 9 and 10. What they confess it. Confess not, they says, that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Why? Because they got to confess Jesus Christ as Lord. If they don't confess Jesus Christ as Lord, they're antichrist. They're a deceiver. See, that's how they were saved, by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. That is the doctrine of Christ, not the gospel. All right, verse 7 again. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whoso transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, if I can get you to read, boy. Doctrine, doctrine of Christ, you gotta, they have to abide in the doctrine of Christ, has not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If they come to you and bring not this doctrine, Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deed. So let's find out what his doctrine is. Let's go to 1 John 2.22. Then we're going to go to 1 John 4, 2 and 3. We'll start at 1 John. 1 John 2.22. Yeah, I hate to say stuff like that because people get that little. Because you know Pastor's anointed, man. He got, he, when he come out and say something, you know. 1 John 2, 22. Are you in 1 John 2, 22? Read it. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? Can you see all of John teaching is about who Jesus is. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the, the Son, the same had not the Father. He that acknowledged the Son, he acknowledged the Son, or confessed the Son, he had the Father also. That's their gospel. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. Start at verse 1. See, you ask most Christians, how they know they say, well, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's all they know. That is not salvation. Not for you anyway. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Watch the next verse. Read. Hereby know you the spirit of God, 
every spirit that do what? Confess it. That's what they did. Romans 10, 9 and 10. They had to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus. They had to believe in their heart God raised Jesus from the dead. They shall be saved. Watch verse number two again. Hereby know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is what? Come in the flesh is of God. Come in the flesh means what? Who he is. I gave you the answer and I asked you. He came in the flesh. Don't you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John showed Jesus Christ came in the flesh? John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh? If the Word was made flesh, who, who was it once he was made flesh? He was Jesus. All right. Verse 3. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereby you have heard it shall come even now is in the world. Look at verse number uh, 13. Matter of fact, not. Uh, yeah, let's do 13. Let's go down to verse 13. On the screen, read. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because we have given to us his spirit. All right. Let's go down and read the last few verses. Uh, chapter 5. Start with chapter 5. Now this is where they get they born again at. 1 John chapter 5. Verse 1. 1 John 5, 1. Are you there? Let's read it. Whoso believeth that Jesus is the Christ. Can't you see everything and believe who he is? If they believe he's the Christ, is born of God. Everyone that believe it, I'm sorry, and everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him also that begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. See, that, you, you in another, another teaching, keeping commandments, all right? But I want to show you what John wrote. Uh, go to the, verse 20 of the same chapter, chapter 5. Matter of fact, let's stop back at verse 13. Let's get that first. 1 John 5, 13. Now, this was to Jews. This is not to you. Their salvation, they had to believe who he is. They had to believe he's the Christ, the Son of God. That was called the doctrine of Christ. You are teaching, Paul teaching you the gospel of Christ, which is Christ's death, being resurrection. I keep saying that because if, I don't want you to die and go to hell. Verse 13. Read. These things I have, have I written to you that believe what? On the name. You're just believing on the name of the Son of God. That's who Jesus is. That you may know you have eternal life. That was to Jews. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. That's what people are believing to be saved. Wrong. You're still lost. Verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything in his name, see, can't you see it's not him? Anything according to his will, he hears us. You know that's not us. And if we, if we know that he hears us, we, 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 what's where we ask? That's what you get from a lot of these teachers who are trying to get money. That's why they use that stuff on you. Verse 20. Verse 20 said, And we know that the Son of God is come, and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true. Even in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Listen, that's what they believe. That's what they are, how they are saved. That's not how you saved. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. And let's show you why. 1 John chapter 4. I'm sorry, chapter 3. And we're going to start reading verse 22, 23, and 24. And then I got to get out of this. Because this is not your gospel. But this is what most people believe. How you know you say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I learned that in Sunday school. I was wrong. That's what they taught us in Sunday school. Just believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And guess what? And you shall be saved. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, are you there? I, am I okay? We got on the screen, and you got a Bible. Come on. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandment. God didn't give you no commandment to keep. And do those things which are pleasing his sight. We are he did, love one another. Let's keep going. Verse 23. 
that you should believe. That's it. Believe what? On the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. That's all He's going to teach you in John. And love one another as He gave us commandment. Verse 24. He that keepeth His commandment dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. Hereby know we that He abide in us because the Spirit which He has given us. Believe His commandment, keep His commandment, and love one another. That's what He told them to do. Go to Gospel of John chapter 1. So when John wrote his gospel, he wrote his gospel showing you how they were saved. John chapter 1. And we're going to start reading with verse number 9. See, when you're preaching the Son of God, Jesus the Son of God, you're preaching the Word with made flesh. That's not the gospel Paul preaching. That's why people don't have the inheritance. Well, they got to go. Got to go somewhere to get that communion on first Sunday. All right, verse number nine, read it. That was a true light. Oh, uh, that go to the screen, okay. That was a true light which lighted every man that come into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Well, if the world knew him not, who was the world? Israel, it's not hard. The world knew him not. They were called the world, all right? That's why God so loved the world. It's not hard. All right. Verse number three. He came to us all, and his own received him not. Well, he just said he came to the world, and the world received him not. I mean, can't you discern the world and his own is the same word? Go back to verse number 10 again. I just got to go head on because some of y'all had a hard day. Hey, well, let me tell y'all something. Let me give you some good news. On the, on the west of you, Michigan, on the west of you, it's like 30-some degrees below zero. So cheer up. Let's keep going. And if you think I'm lying, check it out. Kansas City played football last night. How many know what the temperature was last night? A uh, minus 32 Minus 21 degrees at game time. All over there, hour, the rest of the week, minus 30 some degree, and it goes all the way down to Texas, I think. You're on this side with a positive. Of course it's cold, but you could have been over there. So cheer up, my brother and sister. All right. Uh, uh, Gospel of St. John, we're in verse number 10. The world is Israel at that time. Read it. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And well, what did he make the world? Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. All right? And he came to his own. Now he said the world was made by him, but the world knew him not. The world didn't know him, and he was in the world. Yeah. He came to his own and his own received them not. Well, who did not receive him? Israel. Whew. Let me move on, man. It's hard. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to do what? To become sons of God. How were they saved? Even to them that did what? They believed on his name. That's how they were saved. You are not saved by believing on his name. You are saved by believing the gospel of Christ, which believing he died for your sins, he was buried in your place, and God raised him from the dead. That's how you say. If I can get you to just hold on to that. Bump somebody say, hold on. Hold on. My Lord. All right, now, I got a few minutes. I got to take this time and, and show you a uh, partaker of his promise. Uh, let's go first to... Romans 15, 25 through 27. I got I to gotta go now. I got to spend some precious time here. Romans chapter 15, verse 25 to verse 27. I didn't see I had the wade in the house, so I got to do better. Romans 15, Romans 15, uh, 25. Or should I say the wades? Romans 15, 25. Now, what am I giving you now? Partakers of his promise. Romans 15, 25, read. But now I go to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. Now, we, we got we to get away from church folk 
Because the first thing they're going to say is, praise the Lord, saints. I said, praise the Lord, saints. They don't know what in the world they're talking about. All right. Verse number 26. For it had pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the pure, poor saints at Jerusalem. Come on, you don't have Gentiles at Jerusalem. You can't hardly go there now. Uh, verse 27. For it has pleased them verily. Now, I didn't say you can't go to Jerusalem. Okay, don't, don't take that out of context. You can charter a bus. And verse 27. For it had pleased them verily, and their debtor they are. For if the Gentiles, come on, if the Gentiles have been made what? Gentile was made what? Partaker of his promise of the spiritual things, which is the Holy Spirit, their duty is also to minister them carnal things. So we were made partakers of, of, the, of the saints' spiritual things. Okay? We were made what? Partakers. Look at Romans chapter 11, verse 17. Why are you in Romans? Back to Romans chapter 11 and verse number 17. Verse 17 says, if some, Romans 11, 17, there we go. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them. See, we was grafted in. And with them, we was grafted in with them, partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. See, they are called the olive tree. We were called the wild. We were, we were wild too, brother. All right, let's move on. Philippians 1, 7. Philippians 1, 7. See, when you do not listen to the Apostle Paul and receive what he has given us of Christ, you can't get grace. See, people are going to churches and God knows they're going through all kinds of stuff, but they won't believe the gospel of Christ. You can't get grace because it has to come through the Apostle Paul. God gave him grace to give us. Ain't that right? All right, now watch this. Philippians 1, 7. I know some people are hardcore, but they're just hardcore. Philippians 1, 7. Watch what Paul said. Read it. Even as it's meet for me to think this of you all because I have in my heart as much as in both in my bond and the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. Watch what he's going to tell you. Read. You are all partakers of what? My grace. God gave the grace to him. And by us believing in the gospel that it preached, we become partakers of that grace. Come on, get a lot of big hand. I gave you Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 already. I'm not going there. But let's go to, uh, um, I think you got the message there. Uh, let's go to another one. I gave you Ephesians. Go to Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. From the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 22. 32, I got 15 more minutes, 16. Acts chapter 20. See, this is, this is an awesome stuff if you just study the word of God and you'll know what you got, what, how God, what God had to do to get it to you. So we thank God for the apostle Paul. That's why we need to follow him just like it was that we was in the old covenant and now God has put all his grace up on Joshua and told us to follow Joshua into the promised land. He's going to make sure we get our inheritance. Now, if you had gone on ahead of Joshua and said, I don't need Joshua, that's what happened with the people who follow Moses. We don't need more. And they died in the wilderness. Moses told them what to do. They didn't do it. God said, no, no, no. You're not going in right now. You just take 38 more years to decide. And they went round and around and around and, and round and around and around until they all died out. And, and Deuteronomy chapter 1 started out at, okay, you've been around this mountain burying your dead long enough. It's time to go in. That's what God did. He just let them go around in circles. That's why so many folks are going around in circles. They're going to church all their life, but just going around in circles. They're not following nobody. All right. But the denomination. All right. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Are you there? 
Let's read it together. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. I thought they were there. Okay, here we go. Read. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. Wait a minute. Who he's talking to here? Ephesians. Brothers, I commend you to God and to what? And to the word of his grace. Who was the goddess of Ephesians? Diana. So you know they wouldn't say they Gentile. And now, brothers, I commend you to God and to what? To the word of his grace. Not the word of God. Say the word of his grace. What? I commend you to God and the word of his grace. Now, what, what's what the word of the grace is able to do? See, if you're over here trying to go to a church where they're preaching you the word of God, that's why you don't have it. Watch what the word of his grace is able to do, which is able to do what? Build you up. So if you want to be built up, that's what the word of his grace does. Now, you can't go over here and get another gospel and expect to get the gospel of Christ, I mean, uh, the, yeah, the gospel of peace or the, of the, the gospel of the Son of God. You, the gospel of the kingdom. There are a lot of, but that don't build you up. This gospel of grace builds you up. And what else does it do? Come on, I need everybody for once in your life to read the screen. Just one, just one time. I'm trying to help you get your stuff, man. Verse number 20, I'm not trying to get nothing from you. That's what the guy said when he came up to Saginaw. He came to the church, I won't say the name of it. When he came in there and he looked at the people with him. He absolutely do that when he preached Told that man, said, why the choir still singing? I come here to help you get your stuff. I come here to help you get your stuff. And he taking up the offering. And he by himself. Ah, oh, y'all can't catch on fast. How I'm going to help you get your stuff when you the one got the basket? And when he said that, people go throw money on the step. Trying to help these folk get their stuff. See, they already, you know. People don't get it. There's a man came in here one time for that. I went, no, 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 we can't do it no more. Some of y'all was here. Because people think you got to come throw the money on the step. When you throw the money on the step, that's that man's money. Hey, one guy told me, he says, I know a little more than that. I'm serious. And I, I knew right then he would never, ever, ever, ever come back here again. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told me. He said, I gave him some money. I'm telling him I gave him some pretty good money for, for one night. More than I usually give anybody else. He says, because he feel like he's the prophet. So he was like, that's not all. It's, it's more money than that. I'm going, I won't ask him my wife know what I would say, right? <laughs> what the, what the, are you talking about? I decide what I give you, but that's not what they're looking at. They're looking at how much money came. So you throw it up on the step, they feel like that's their money. People are blessing them, see, because they laid the money at the apostles' feet. That's where they get that from. So you ain't no apostles up in here. All right, here we go. Verse 32. And now, brother, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. The word of his grace. Well, what's the word of his grace? The gospel of Christ. Which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. See, the ones sanctified are Jews. They already got the inheritance. That's why you read Ephesians chapter 1. They got the inheritance from the foundation of the world. Their foundation, their inheritance was already in Christ since the foundation of the world. God wanted to make sure we got ours. And I was in Christ, but we couldn't get in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6. Three things that God gave you when you got in Christ. How many, how many know them? You become fellow heirs. You, you come up with the body of Christ. Well, how did you get in the body of Christ? Romans chapter 6, verse 3. See, that's why, that's why this stuff is, people are still fussing over it. 
because they still tell you how you got in the body of Christ. They say you got water baptized. Well, you couldn't get water baptized to get in the body of Christ. Water baptism was a natural, physical formula, but it was a type and a shadow of what really happened when the Spirit put you in Christ. So you had to be put in Christ. Say so you had to be put in Christ. See, just like Christ had to be put in you. All right, Romans 6 and 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized? It said, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were, were baptized into his death. Well, that's what happened when the Spirit put you in Christ. He put you in Christ. He put you in Christ's death. And then what happened in verse number four said, therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we were been planted in the likeness of his death. See, he's giving you a physical formula showing you baptism is like this. So people take the like. Do you see I'm in like in there? Go back to verse 3. You didn't see it. We're going to stop at every like and as. Know ye not that so many of us as. Come on, circle the as. If something is as, it's not there. He's giving you something is like. As were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into a death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like. No, 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 circle the like. See, you got to understand, he's telling you baptism in water is like. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even, even so we, you got to circle the even so we. Because that's a like. We also shall walk in newness of life. For if, circle the if now, if we were planted together in the likeness of his death. If. See, he's giving you a physical water baptism to show you how it's like. But we eat up the like. Verse number six. Verse number five. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be. We shall be first. You got to circle it. We shall be. Because that's what he's trying to tell you. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. We shall be. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might. The body of sin might be destroyed, that we henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe. You got to stop on the word we believe. He's telling you what we believe. We believe that we shall also, we shall also live with him. He's giving you a picture of a physical death and showing you that it's a spiritual revelation. That's all Paul doing. Paul compares spiritual things with spiritual things. All right? I'm not going to read no more Romans chapter 6. All right? Uh, Hebrews 9, 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Glory, glory, glory. See, all this stuff is good. You just got to rightly divide the word. Paul is talking to Jews in Hebrews. How do I know? Because the book is called Hebrews. And Gentiles are not Hebrews. All right. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Are you there? Let's read verse 15. For this cause he is the mediator of the new covenant, New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, that was the Old Testament with the first testament, they which are called. Now you got to understand something. This word called is not just Jews only. Because when I take you back to 1 Corinthians 1 24, we're going to show you, show you who's called. Let's do that first, so we, we're going to close out here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. 
Because I gave you Galatians 1 and 6 this morning. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. You are called into the grace of Christ. Now, you can stay at your church all you want to. Or you can find a church that preached the gospel of grace. But you are called into the grace of Christ. Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. What I told you to go to? Mark your Bible. Verse 24, 23 and 24. Did I say that? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse... Start verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, the stumbling block, unto the Greek foolishness. But unto them which are what? Come on, now you got to hear it. But unto them which are called, well, who was called? Come on, read the verse. Both Jews and Greeks. See, you got to understand something. You got to understand that over there they don't say that, but you got to understand he, he called both Jews and Greeks. See, you got this thing going on today where people are saying, Everything they do is okay because Jesus is coming back to them. See, that makes me cry because Jesus ain't coming back for them. That's false hope. See, they are still doing the old covenant over there, still doing it. But yet the people over here are still rooting them on, rooting them on. Just keep on doing what you're doing because the Lord is sure going to come back for you. 2,000 years they've been lying to them folks. So sad. All right, Jews and Greeks are called. Now go back to Hebrews chapter 9. And verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Man, that's just like, I know how that feels to be waiting on something and somebody keep telling you the bus coming. And there you down there standing on the corner grand. Ain't no bus coming. You standing out here in this kind of weather, somebody keeps saying, just keep on standing out there, Reverend, because the bus show coming. Never come. Never come. All these folks waited because people in this country told them that he's coming. And they have denied Jesus Christ, rejected the new covenant, You know why they tell them? Because they, they haven't received the new covenant themselves neither. Verse 15, let's read. For this cause he is a mediator of what? The new covenant. That by means of death for the redemption of the transgressor that were under the first testament. That they which are called, said as Jews and Gentiles, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. He's talking about eternal life. But he's talking to folks that was called. Go to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6. We're going to close out with that one. Because he told you what God called you. See, we got people just going to church. See, you're not believing the, you're not believing the Bible. See, that's what I found out. That's what got me back to teaching grace. Because if you don't teach grace, you're not believing the Bible. God already gave you instructions in the Bible what to believe. He's not asking you what you ought to believe. He gave you instructions in the Bible what to believe. Then he gave you a man who found grace. And when you believe and follow him, you'll be partake of his grace. So why people are not partake of his grace? They're not following him. He's following Christ. You're supposed to follow Paul's teaching. People not doing it. They got their own show, their own denomination. So everybody can be what they want to be now in churches. I had a guy come to this church, man. Uh, I won't say from where, because he could be listening. But he came to this church. First he came to this church, uh, he was a pastor. And then he said, well, he also was a prophet when he came, first time. Next year he came, he said he's an apostle. Now I had a problem with that. Because how are you going to be a pastor this year and an apostle next year? 
And most apostles you have now, they're apostles within the first three years. Because they found somebody who is an apostle to make them an apostle. And they get them a stick. Oh, it's, it's out. The word is out. Nobody's, nobody, see, you got to be the biggest. You can't just be a pastor no more. You got to be a, got to be a big word. And the biggest word is, is an apostle. I had one guy came to our church where we was over on, on uh, Elizabeth Lake. Oh, we went, you know, some kind of way. We, we went to this thing that night. And this guy was chief apostle. Man, I was going like, I don't even see that in my Bible. I didn't think somebody could be a chief. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel, Paul says. How many ever heard somebody say they're chief apostle? Y'all haven't? Thank God. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I marvel, Paul says, that you're so so removed from him that call you where? Into the grace of Christ. He called everybody into the grace of Christ and to another gospel, which is not another. Guess what's what Paul tells them? That's not another gospel. But there'll be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be a curse or cut off. As we said before, see I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you than that which you have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? If I seek to please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you brothers. Now watch this. That the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. It did not originate with man. So if you're going to a church, it's a denomination probably. You need to find out how old your church. When did you start? Who started your denomination? Because you're not following the Bible. You are following your denomination. Most likely, you have on your wall a great big old page will tell you what you believe. A covenant that they made for your church. It's not a New Testament covenant. Just a covenant that they made together a hundred years ago for your church. And you have to say that covenant every month, first Sunday, you in a religion, denomination. When God gave us the word of, of, of grace, the word of truth, he put it in the Bible. What people are doing now is go in the Bible and get what they like. So if they say, okay, in this church, we're we going we gonna to baptize in Jesus' name. Well, they got churches like that. Well, I'm just going to be a part of that movement. So we only baptize here in Jesus' name. That's what happens. And they're the church. That's where people go and die. And then that person over here said, well, I got Matthew 28, 18, 19. We baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what they get. And that's where they die. Nobody wants to preach what God told them. It's the gospel of Christ. Because the purpose of the gospel of Christ is so you would have life so you would have truth so you would have righteousness God's righteousness so you would have three things in Ephesians 3 6 and I'm done what three things you're gonna have you're gonna become fellow heirs you're gonna become of the body of Christ and you're gonna be what partake of the Holy Ghost in Christ and it will only happen by the gospel of Christ hey my time is over but I want you to know, this church preaches the gospel of Christ. And I want to say to anybody who's listening, if you're not sure, 
ask your pastor. You just got a ticket to get thrown out of church. My time is up. I thank you for yours. And the door of faith is open under you.